you don't have to use them. They are cumbersome. We can determine all this information, either StatCrunch or uh, graphing calculator. So now let's also do the graphing calculator. So go to Stat and go to Edit. I entered my data in list L1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In list L2, 0 0.06, 0 0.58, 0 0.22, 0 0.1, 0 0.03, and 0.01. Let me know when you're finished with this. And then we'll go back to StatCrunch because we already saw that the answer is there. We didn't have to do anything extra. When you're done with this, let me know after you enter list L1 and list L2. So let's go now with second and quit. Get out of there. Go to Stat. Go to calculator or calculations and one variable stats at the top. Press enter and make sure that you have the list L1 is X values, list L2 probabilities and go down to calculate. Since we have the entire population, everything is here. All probability, probability sum of probabilities is one, nothing is missing. You will see what happens. We are, we are not going to get the standard deviation of the sample. We're going to get directly what we are interested in. And we're going to get X bar. But remember, this is X bar is the notation for the sample. But th this case, we have everything. I will not copy X bar. I have to copy mu. Mu of X. This X is uppercase. And I got 1.49. So I also copy... Sigma for uppercase X for the entire random variable, not for an outcome, of course. And this is 0.932684. So normally we discuss that for the mean two decimal digits for the standard deviation, we should stop at the fourth. So we could have rounded uh, six up to seven. So now let's get out of there for a second and let's go to variables. Scroll down to statistics and scroll down to sigma, number four. And we want to square that because the calculator will take everything, the entire sigma, and it will have tiny error or none or too, too small to mention. So you can enter this and square it, that's fine, it's acceptable, but it's easier. If you don't have this feature, that's fine too. So, so this is the standard deviation, and this is uppercase X, of course, uppercase X, and this is the variance of this uh, random variable, discrete random value, 8699. So that was our example three, to compute the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation for the discrete random variable from example one. We are ready to move on to binomial random variables. Any questions for me? Okay, last section before our midterm. 6.2, of course, binomial. random variables. Okay, binomial random variables have to fulfill these four conditions. If any of these conditions is, fails, it's not a binomial probability distribution or is not a binomial random variable. Number one, n, is number of trials. It's a fixed number number of trials. What is a trial? Repetition. Repetitions of the experiment. This has to be fixed. 
If you say today I'm going to repeat the experiment five times and tomorrow ten times and the next day fifteen times, it's not a binomial random variable. You have to have a fixed number of trials. Then they have to all they have to be independent. Trials are independent. If they're not, it's not a binomial random variable. Each trial can have only two possibilities, either success or failure. There is not a third one or a fourth one or a fifth one. Like, for example, I roll a die. Each trial has four possi six possibilities, not failure and success, un unless I define failure and success differently. Uh, maybe I consider success an odd number and a failure an even number. Then it becomes a binomial experiment. But if I have six possible outcomes for each trial, no. I can only have yes or no. And the last one, the probability doesn't change. So probability P for a success. And if you want, it's denoted by Q, 1 minus P, that's for failure, the other one, is fixed, or R fixed better, is if we're talking about just the P, and if we both we talk about that, both, we say they are fixed. You cannot say that uh, the probability of the, on the first trial for a success is 0.2, and the probability on the second trial for a success is 0.3. No. This is fixed for the entire number of trials for all the trials, same probability of failure and the same probability of um, uh, success and failure. Okay, and I have copied a couple of examples. So let's analyze these three examples and decide whether they represent um, um, a binomial random variable or not. So let's see. Let's uh, read the first one. A, B, C. Anyone wants to look at the first one and say, is the first one, is the first one a binomial experiment uh, or not? All four conditions have to be fulfilled. And let's analyze them. So an experiment in which a basketball player who historically makes 80% of his free throws is asked to shoot three free throws and the number of free throws made is recorded. So let's analyze anyone and wants to say anything about this one. So what is the probability of a success for this experiment? 0.8. Um, how, what is N? Shoot th free three throws. So N is three. Are the trials de independent? Yes. Uh, are P and Q fixed? They do not change from trial to trial, from throw to throw. The answer is yes. They're fixed. That is his probability. He's not a different person from trial to trial. So I will say binomial. It's a binomial random variable or a binomial experiment. Let's read part B. Um, according to the recent polls, 28% of Americans state that chocolate is their favorite flavor of ice cream. So the probability is 0.28. 
Uh, suppose a simple random sample of size 10, okay, is obtained and the number of Americans who chose chocolate as their favorite ice cream is recorded. Are the trials independent? Are P and Q fixed from trial to trial? If you say yes to these two, then we will consider this a binomial experiment. Yes and yes. Let's take a look at C. A probability experiment in which three cars are drawn from a deck without replacement. So I have a deck of, uh, of cards and I, re I take out three cards without replacement and the number of aces is recorded. We know that the probability of success in this case, there are four aces out of 52. That is fixed. The probability of Q is one minus the probability of a success. That is fixed. The number of trial, trials is three. That is clear. Question, are the trials independent or not? No. No. Why they're not independent? Because the experiment is conducted without replacement. Once I got an ace or whatever card I took, we discussed that last time, the probability will change. The probability for getting a, um, an ace on trial two will not stay at four over 52. No matter what card I took. If I didn't take a, an ace, it will be at four over 51 because I'm not putting it back. If I take an, I, uh, an ace out, it will be three over 51. So the trials are not independent, we will say not binomial. This is not a, a, a binomial random variable. Okay, so coming back to uh, the definition or the, um, um, the formula for the variance. The formula for the standard deviation is the square root of it. So you have two different formulas if you ever decide to do this by hand. And what it means is you subtract um, from each outcome, you subtract the mean, you square it, and you multiply by the probability of that outcome. Or maybe a simpler formula would be this. There is no need to apply it because we have the calculator and we have stat crunch. Okay. Compute probabilities of binomial experiments. Another very interesting formula. Um, for the uh, binomial experiments. Again, we do not have to use it because we're going to determine the probabilities using like we just did in StatCrunch. So coming back to StatCrunch right, just for one minute because I don't want to forget because um, I want to finish with this one and move on to the next example. So um, I don't think I shared. Oh no, of course I didn't share. Okay, I'm sharing now. Uh, as you see, we do have the standard deviation. Um, and uh, going back to my notes, as you see, they write more than four digits, but when you write it on paper, on a test, um, four digits, good enough, okay? Okay, I'm coming back. Now, we would like to uh, look at this, uh, the next uh, experiment, and th this will be a binomial experiment. We will have to uh, go through different steps and answer different questions. However, let's talk about how to compute the mean and the standard deviation of a random variable that is binomial random variable. So, again, the formulas. is... 
So the mean or the expected, the expected value for a random variable that is binomial is simply n times p. And what about the standard deviation? The standard deviation of this random variable is very simple npq. You will find it also as np times 1 minus p. Why? Because q is 1 minus p. That is the same thing. Okay, so now let's analyze what we are asked to, uh, to do in the following example. So it's asking us to answer different questions and also at the end to compute the mean and standard deviation for this random variable for this binomial. Okay, ready? So let's read example two and take notes. I'm just looking to see the time on my video. Okay, so according to CTIA, 25% of US households, so um, probability 0.25 uh, of all US households are wireless only households, no landline. So some time ago, I don't know when, they calculated or they asked or they looked at um, overall and they came up with this percentage. So we have to trust them for now. Uh, in part A, what is the probability of obtaining exactly five wireless only households based on a random sample of 20 households? N equals 20. So they want us to determine the probability. So find P of X being five. What is the probability of obtaining exactly five wireless only households based on a random sample of 20 households? Okay. So one possibility, and maybe I should show at least once how to uh, enter the information in the graphing calculator or how to use this formula. So let's do that, just that, one second. So let, let me just show you how to approach this. So n is 20, so the probability for any particular outcome is n choose x. Probability, the success raised to this number and one minus P raised to N minus X. This looks a complicated uh, expression. However, this N choose in your, in your book, it does not appear like this. It appears like this N choose X N choose X. For example, n is 20. 20, choose 5. What does this mean? I can, from 20 elements, I can create several ways of, or I can select 5 out of 20. So I have 20, so 20 elements. I can create elements or subsets of 5 with different, with the different, um, uh, elements from those 20. How many are they? And how many ways I can create or select five out of 20? And here it is. Go to math, go to probabilities, all the way to probabilities, and scroll down to n choose r. Of course, everything is different. So n choose r, n choose x, but this is what we need to use. So use number three. However, we enter 20 first. Some calculators do not have this option. So you, you may have to enter by hand first 20, then go to math, across to probabilities, and then select that uh, number three and then five. So this calculator is among the last ones, but the previous ones that I used to have, they didn't allow that. So you had to put 20, go to N, choose K or X, and uh, put five after that. And that's press enter. Look in how many ways, 15,504, 15,504 ways of selecting five out of 20. Okay. So now, in order to determine this probability, 
for p for x equals 5, we get n choose k or n choose x, which I already determined is 15504, multiplied by the probability of a success, 0.25, raised to this power, which is x. x is 5. And if 5 are successes out of 20, this must be the rest of 15. So in a sequence of 5, in a sequence of 20, I have 5 successes and 15 failures. So this will be 15 if this is 5. So 0.75, 1 minus 0.25 is 0.75 raised to 15. So one more time, what does this mean? In every sequence of 20, I have 5 successes and 15 failures times the number of possibilities of getting that. So with the graphing calculator, go to stat, go to calculations. Um, I'm looking for a second because I want not just when the binomial in this. I don't want the Z test. I don't want proportions. Okay. I don't have the data. So it should allow me to I don't have the, no, I don't want proportions. I don't want the Z interval. We're not there yet. We will. We will be using a lot of these. I just want the binomial. Why? Why don't I have this here? Is that it? I don't want any regression. I don't want logistics. No, I don't want manual. Nope. And I don't want the cubic regression. No. I just want a simple binomial experiment. I can't believe this. The calculator doesn't have the binomial experiment anymore. That's not possible. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, in that case, we have to just calculate this. 15504. Um, I like to put parentheses, 0.25, close the parentheses, and then put power 5, and then 0.75, and power 15, and press enter. Here's my probability, 0 0.2023. You could change this into 